Okay. Amanda, am I good? Perfection. Okay. Welcome everyone to our monthly seminar. My name's Katie. I'm one of the dietitians, and I'm going over 10 ways to protect yourself against cancer. Amanda is also here as well today, who may be chiming in uh, throughout the presentation. So the agenda is to go over WTC-related data and then specifically the American Cancer Society's diet and lifestyle tips for protecting yourself against cancer and any key takeaways uh, that you can apply to your current routine. So first, I wanted to go through, um, you know, some of the top program cancers, uh, just so that we're aware of maybe what our, you know, uh, responders are dealing with. So as we can see, the most common cancers being non-melanoma skin cancer, uh, prostate cancer, and melanoma of the skin. Um, that's by far, you know, the most common, um, and that's just due to the, you know, exposure. So um, there's some things we can't prevent of course, but we can always control the controllable. So it's not a cancer prevention per se, but definitely protection and trying to modify any risk factors that we can. Uh, so this is just another visual of how we can see that, you know, non-melanoma skin and prostate uh, cancers are most common. Um, we are seeing a uh, also a breast cancer in female survivors being um, an increase as well. So here at our WTC clinic, um, that is one of the reasons that many of our uh, responders do come here is for, you know, a yearly physical, getting your referrals for your cancer screenings, chest x-rays, all these things. Um, so it is the reason why you're here. So there's a common quote. I never knew it was from Benjamin Franklin, but an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. As a dietitian, I firmly believe in this statement as a little bit does go a long way. So the following 10 tips are going to be some tangible um, and hopefully helpful changes if you're um, interested to help protect yourself against any cancer risk in the future. Again, we can't control everything, but definitely working on prevention is, is huge, can make a big impact. So the first one, number one, from the American um, Institute of Cancer Research is being at a healthy body weight. So here at WTC, we do offer nutritional counseling um, and there is evidence that too much body fat does increase our risk of at least 12 different types of cancer. I didn't know this until I started working here and how you know fat can, can cause inflammation throughout the body and can actually increase our risk of uh, different cancers. So as we can see here, prostate and breast cancer are both on here and they are both common uh, cancers within our WTC responders. So anything that we can do to prevent that is going to be very, very important. And most of the tips that follow throughout this presentation are going to help us achieve a healthier body weight. So they go hand in hand. And I always tell my patients, we want to live healthy to lose weight, not lose weight so you can be a healthy person. So many times the different changes that you make in your diet are going to be more of a side effect of, or excuse me, the weight loss is a side effect of the changes that you make in your diet, not just starving ourselves and thinking that we're going to, you know, be healthy. So uh, we offer a body composition analysis test either during your monitoring visit, which you can get done today if you ask your nurse or, um, you know, at your one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling visits. Um, and the scale does measure body fat, muscle, and visceral fat. So I'm going to try this pen here, um, laser pointer. So as we can see here, um, we took our average uh, numbers from the patients that have done the scale already. And the average BMI, which is the body mass index, your height divided by your weight is 33. That is technically stage one obesity. So our average BMI is overweight for our population. Um, our goal is to get you closer to that 25 number if possible, but everyone's different. If you're heavier muscle, it's not always going to be as easy. So that's why we do measure body fat. And our average body fat is 31.1%. Now that is high. Um, you know, the goal for men and women is in the low 20s. So our first goal is to get our patients to be under 30% body fat. And we do that through strategic nutritional counseling. Next is muscle percent. 
Everyone's is going to be different, especially if you're unable to exercise due to mobility limitations. However, our average muscle percent is 64.7%. Now that's for when and w- men and women combined. So it doesn't tell us as much, but the goal for men is greater than 70 and the goal for women is greater than 60. And then lastly, visceral fat is very, very important. That's the type of fat around your organ, specifically in your uh, belly area. We're going to go more into that in the next slide, but the average is 16.8, which is very high. Um, it is almost borderline in the red zone. And are the goal for men and women is to be under 12. So we can see there is quite a range going from one all the way up to 35, but technically 12 and under is considered healthy. So we do have a little bit of ways to go with our patients. Um, Visceral fat is, like I said, it's not the fat that you can grab on the outside of your body. It is internal. We can see here it's going throughout the organs. Some of you may have a fatty liver disease. That can be a side effect of having too much visceral fat. Um, Diabetes, heart disease, all these things. But that's not really the topic for today. But there is research to support, uh, you know, the relationship between cancer and visceral fat. And again, it is cancer type and gender dependent. But it is important to note that people that do tend to have a higher visceral fat, they may also be, um, you know, partaking in riskier, um, riskier things like eating bad or smoking or drinking alcohol. So if you do have visceral fat, it's not something that you have to say that you're a bad person or anything like that. But maybe the choices that you're making aren't always the best for you. And that's why we have a program here to help you. Um, but there is research to, to tie these two together. So moving on, one way to decrease visceral fat is exercise. And there is research to show that routine physical activity, whether it be swimming, walking, dancing, playing with your kids, walking your dog, weightlifting, pickleball, any sort of movement, hopefully one that raises your heart rate a little bit, um, can be helpful. 150 minutes a week is recommended by the American um, Institute of Cancer Research. And the three uh, cancers that it can protect you from is breast, colon, and endometrial cancers. So for our women out there, we need to get our exercise in. We need to be strong, especially as we get older. We need bone density. And doing that exercise is going to help us get there. We don't need a man to help open the jar. We can do it ourselves. (laughs) Eating a diet rich in whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and beans is the third tip to help protect ourselves from cancer. So we wanna um, eat all of these different foods because they're A, high in fiber, which can help reduce colon cancer risk, and they're relatively low in calories. Um, A whole, I think two whole cups of spinach is maybe five calories. It's very, very low calorie and high nutritional density. That means a lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals with not a lot of calories versus something like a muffin, which is very high calorie, but very low nutrition. So fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans have a lot of um, polyphenols, which can help fight cancer. Um, Whole grains, like I said, to support gut health. And also I did throw in heart healthy fats here, um, including avocado, um, walnuts, uh, olive oil, all of those are, are going to be anti-inflammatory to help fight heart disease that increase or decrease that visceral fat and helps to hopefully protect ourselves from potential cancer risks. So I wanted to show that I thought this was pretty interesting. So this is the old American plate. So the typical American meal is very high, you know, amount of a meat, specifically usually a red meat. It's loaded. This is about an eight to 12 ounce steak. Um, We have a huge amount of mashed potatoes here with butter and then peas, which do have a good color. They do fall into a starchy vegetable category. So they are not in the same classification as like broccoli, uh, where it's just non-starchy. Um, this falls into the more the potato category. So it really is not going to be very uh, weight weight beneficial or heart health, um, you know, healthy. Now the transitional plate, we can see the steak just got a lot smaller, which is awesome. And again, the start serving size of the starch just got smaller and the green beans are also way less starchy than the green peas. So that's a great step in the right direction. If you're not quite into things like salad or broccoli, string beans are, are awesome for you. Um, 
Now, the next step is the new American plate, which is what we do typically try to recommend now for cancer prevention. And this plate features a wide variety of cancer fighting nutrients. You can see you have your broccoli, you have your tomatoes, you've got your peppers, you've got a lot of color. You can see how vibrant this is compared to this plate. So the more color, the better. You can see we still have a lean meat here. This is a modest about three to four ounces of grilled chicken. Fish could also easily be put on this plate. So thinking about ways you can add more color to your diet. And um, another option is more of a stir fry, right? Because a one pot meal like this might be what's easier for your family. So just make sure that you're using whole grains. I think this is a brown rice. We can see we have lots of vegetables and then we do have some chicken, um, you know, tossed in here, but you could do a red meat as a complement to the meal, but it's not the star of the meal. And we'll get into red meat in a minute. But this list here, which I'd be happy to send to anybody, has the phytonutrients in food. So each color represents a different nutrient, believe it or not. That's why we always say eat the rainbow. So apples have a different nutrient content than oranges simply because of their color. Or a red bell pepper versus a yellow bell pepper. They're different because they have the different nutrients. And you can see almost all of these colors have anti-cancer benefits. We can see the white, tan, and brown have anti-cancer. Green vegetables, of course, have anti-cancer. Um, yellow vegetables have cell protection and anti-inflammatory properties. Same thing with orange. And then we know red, especially tomatoes, can be anti-cancer. Uh, so eat your vegetables. The next uh the next tip is to limit your consumption of fast foods and other processed foods that are high in fat, starches, or sugars. So basically the opposite of step three. We can see this is a McDonald's big breakfast, which has 600, uh, 760 calories and almost 50 grams of fat. Um, this is two slices of pizza with a 20 fluid ounce Coke. This is a very common Friday night meal for many of us. This is almost 800 calories over 137 grams of carbohydrates uh, versus a much healthier breakfast, which is a three egg vegetable omelet that we can make at home with some mushrooms, some spinach and some peppers with a medium orange. It's almost half the calories as your McDonald's breakfast still has fat, but it's healthy fat from the eggs and the olive oil, very low carb and still has almost the same amount of protein as this breakfast here. And this is a grilled chicken panini with pesto and a water, much less calories, much less fat, or um, similar fat actually, but uh, you know it's gonna be a better type of fat, heart more heart healthy, and still, again, the same amount of protein there, but way less carbs. Soda is not good for us, which we're gonna get into. <laughs> um, oops. So uh, back to the concept of limiting red meats and processed meats. So it is recommended by the American Institute of Cancer Research to consume no more, no more than 12 to 18 ounces of lean red meat per week, which is still a decent amount. But if we're having a 16 ounces of steak, when we do have steak, that's pretty much all our meat for the week. And um, the reason is for colorectal cancer. The um, meats that you can choose should be lean ground beef, lean steak, lean pork or lamb. And definitely it is recommended to have very little, if not avoid red processed meats that have been preserved by smoking, salting, curing, or adding chemical preservatives, including bacon, sausage, pastrami, and charcuterie type meats like uh, prosciutto, salami, soppressat, and pepperoni. And the reason is that they are a class one carcinogen for colorectal cancer. The reason is because there, there's a lot of different hypotheses. These, I should disclaim that. However, we believe that it is because uh, red meat has a higher amount of heme iron, which is broken down in the gut and forms chemicals uh, called TMAO that can damage the gut lining and alter our gut bacteria, which can be problematic. So by having more fiber in the gut, we can decrease the risk of that TMAO becoming inflammatory. Um, and you may ask, well, what about turkey bacon or chicken? chicken sausage. I do personally believe it's better for you because it has less of that heme iron and the AICR does not currently have any evidence uh, to link it with certain cancers. But again, I would still try and do more lean meats, less processed meats, having a whole chicken, grilled chicken instead of deli turkey as best as you can. We have to be able to pick our 
pick our poison for lack of a better word. Um, but you do want to avoid things that are nitrites and nitrate. So um, Boar's Head and Applegate are two brands that are nitrate free that we do encourage our patients to utilize. And our top tips for reducing your red meat consumption is to uh, think of the transitional plate and think of your meat like a garnish, not the star of the plate. This salad here is rich in avocado, it has tomatoes, it has lettuce and a little bit of steak, but the steak is not the star of the plate. Next up is definitely going meatless now and then, uh, doing a nice bean taco or a bean chili or minestrone soup. Loading up on vegetables and beans is a great way to reduce your risk of heart disease as well as colon cancers. And it can just help crowd out some of the meat. You could have a turkey chili or even a beef chili, but add the add the beans to help you feel more full so you eat less in general to help with weight loss. Skipping the processed meats, of course, we can see this is just an egg sandwich. It's not a bacon, egg, and cheese. That's a huge, huge uh, change for many people, but it can save you a lot of calories as well as cancer, um, you know, nutrients cancer, pro-cancer nutrients like bacon. And then of course, always try to dabble with swapping out turkey or chili, uh, turkey or chicken when possible, like a turkey meatloaf, for example, or this looks like it is a, a turkey pasta, so. Next one is limiting your consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages. So according to the American Institute of Cancer Research, regular consumption of sugar-sweetened soft drinks and other beverages that contain sugar causes weight gain and obesity, which is linked to a higher probability of developing those 12 different types of cancers that I mentioned at the beginning of the session. So um, even 100% fruit juice can fill you up with too much sugar and calories. So although that is natural sugar, we do still recommend to stay away from juice and Gatorade and a lot of those high sugar, even vitamin water, if it's the regular one, way too much sugar. We want to recommend to decrease your fruit uh, juice intake to less than six fluid ounces per day or just eat whole fruit instead. And uh, we can see here, this is like a Dunkin' Latte with a lot of sugar and cream. Instead, try to have it black or, you know, just lower the amount of sugar that you consume. This is a can of Arizona iced tea. Um, and then instead switching to unsweetened iced tea, you can always add your own sugar if you need to, but this is going to save you a ton of calories and a ton of sugar. I had a patient who changed from doing Arizona to the Pure Leaf unsweetened and his his fatty liver disease virtually got reversed pretty much um, just by doing that change. So it can make a big difference. And Coca-Cola, of course, we know the soda is not good for us, but if we're craving something that's not just plain water, try Pellegrino, try seltzer, um, try something that has the carbonation, but not the sugar. And then um, you may be wondering, well, what about diet products like Diet Coke or Snapple Zero? Those won't have added sugar. They don't. So they technically might be good for weight management. However, it is still recommended to decrease your intake of these artificially sweetened drinks that contain aspartame or sucralose or acylfame potassium. And that's just due to the research that we don't know yet. It's mixed on how those artificial sweeteners impact our risk of cancer. So do your own research with those and, and try and think less is best. The more natural the drink, the better. Black tea, black coffee, um, water all day. And we have a, a lot of great tips for hydration in our other videos. And uh, speaking of drinks, limiting your alcohol consumption, there is evidence that is particularly strong for increased risk of cancer um, for six different types of cancers uh, with alcohol breast, colorectal, esophageal, liver, mouth, larynx, pharynx, and stomach. So your risk of lung cancer also rises dramatically if you drink alcohol and smoke. So sometimes those two go hand in hand. So uh, our recommendation is always think before you drink, order smaller sizes, water down your drink, or you know pick a lower calorie mixer, alternate between an alcoholic beverage and a non-alcoholic beverage. If it's a social uh, event, even getting a seltzer with lemon and a straw looks exactly like a vodka soda, but no social pressures there. 
and try to have alcohol free days each week. And of course, you know, always feel free to reach out to any of our case management team if you're interested in discussing your alcohol consumption or getting some tips or even a referral to help you if you are struggling to decrease your amount of alcohol. This is something that not everybody knows, so I want to point out that we it's not recommended to use supplements for cancer prevention in that no pill, capsule, tablet, or liquid can replace the benefits of whole nutrient-dense foods. So it's always best to consult with one of us, your dietitian or your doctor, uh, to help go over what nutrients you may be missing and to supplement. But no pill is really going to be able to protect you against against cancer. And even if you um, if you're someone who does have cancer or a history of cancer, it is recommended to talk to your oncologist about supplements that you plan on taking, because if you are someone that has had a history, sometimes multivitamins can actually be more problematic than helpful. So always, always speak with your clinicians. And then for more information, you can check out the NIH's information on dietary supplements supplements uh, at this link here. And uh, just the bottom line is food first. And you always want to go for high quality supplements that have a USP seal. And just look, think about what you're doing. There's a lot of random ingredients that are in supplements that the FDA is not regulating. I have to be thy own doctor. Um, this might not, uh, you know, really relate to you guys uh, per se with our patient population. But if you have any family or friends who are mothers, um, the Cancer Research Institute does say that breastfeeding your baby is actually can help decrease their risk of cancer or yours. So breast milk contains a lot of nutrients that a baby requires for healthy development. So just a fun fact, um, it can also decrease their risk of overweight and obesity, which can then be a cancer risk. And of course, always say no to tobacco. Research shows that tobacco is linked to 90% of all lung cancers, as well as bladder, cervix, colon, esophagus, kidney, larynx, liver, mouth, pancreas, pharynx, and stomach cancers. And that also goes with uh, things like vaping or the, the tobacco, chewing, the Zin cans. There's so many different carcinogenic um, smoking devices out there these days. So please abstain work with us if you need to. Smoking and drinking alcohol together, like I said, can increase the risk of certain cancers and to know that it's never too late to quit. We see it every day here. It's never too late. We do have a smoking cessation counseling available to you through the program. And of course, we always recommend following up for lung cancer screenings, referrals, and chest x-rays as well. If you are interested in breaking the habit of smoking, um, ask your physician for a referral to our smoking cessation program or grab a flyer or call the main line to request an appointment. And guys, not to be that person, but just feeding off of that, just remember marijuana does count in that category as well. Sometimes we get questions about that. It's still a smoking product. It's still a vape. So just remember that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and you might be feeling overwhelmed by these 10 tips because you might be doing all of these things or you feel strongly about certain areas that, of your lifestyle. But remember, like I said at the beginning, that small changes can make a huge impact. I recommend first starting by reviewing what tips you already follow. Maybe you're already physically active or you already don't smoke or you already don't drink. That's a win. And then pick maybe one or two that you want to start focusing on. And like I said, note that many of these recommendations, like cutting down on your fast food, will help you achieve that healthy weight. So you might be getting a twofer by, by finding what works best for you. Try, you don't need to do everything all at once either. And that's why we're here to help you uh, through our coaching services as well. I'm going to end the recording. but please feel free to call us to make a nutrition counseling appointment and check out our website at stonybrookmedicine.edu slash WTC. And then from there, we do have a resources page with all of our nutrition information and all of our videos and uh, where to schedule. Great job, Katie. This is such a helpful presentation. Thanks. Um, let me, I don't know if I can stop recording. Let's see.